So I want to build a coil gun. It's something that I've thought about for a long time, and I think that now I have accumulated enough skills and knowledge to actually do it and potentially do it justice. This is going to be the first in what will probably end up being many videos. This is just gonna be a somewhat quick description of what I'm planning to do, how I'm planning to do it, and how I'm planning to get from point A to point B. So for those of you that don't know, a coil gun is an electromagnetic accelerator. So it's using forces generated via electromagnetism to accelerate a ferromagnetic material at high velocities. So a ferromagnetic material, that's just anything that will stick to a magnet. So what's most likely gonna be used here is just a small, thin steel rod. The idea behind a coil gun is fairly simple, but the execution is more difficult. So the idea is that you have a bunch of stages, a bunch of coils, and each stage is essentially an air core solenoid. So what it really is, is an electromagnet that's wrapped around a hollow pipe. And then you would have a bunch of these all in a line. So if you were to look at the cross section of one of these stages, it would look something like this. So this would be like half the solenoid coil that's just cut in half. So then you have wires that are wrapping around this in kind of a circular pattern like that. Then in the middle here, you have this hollow tube. This is where your projectile will go. So how it actually works is the projectile will start at the base of it over here, and then it's pushed into it either by the firing mechanism or by the stage before it. And the coil would have some sort of sensors at the front and the back of each individual module. So this beginning sensor here is gonna see that the projectile is coming into it. Once it detects that, it's going to turn on the coil. And of course, you've got a ferromagnetic material, an electromagnet, it's going to suck it into it. So then the projectile is now in the middle of the coil, and this is where it wants to be. This is where it's being pulled to. So the projectile wants to be at the center of the electromagnet, but we don't want it to stay there. We want it to keep on going. So if you just left the electromagnet on indefinitely, it would just be sucked to the middle of one of those stages and it wouldn't go anywhere. So you need to use some sort of sensor on the output here to detect when it's gotten to the center and then turn it off when that occurs. Also for this reason, if you wanted to make things simple on yourself, then you would want a projectile that is just slightly longer than the length of one of your coils. This way, when your second sensor detects it, it is just about right in the middle where it has already gained the maximum momentum, and if it's left on any longer, it'll only be taken away from its momentum. So you turn the coil on when you see it here, and you turn it off when you see it here. And then also, when this is sensed, you would then turn on the next coil to come after it, so then it then continues going down. So again, the working principle is pretty simple, but like I said earlier, making it actually function and function well is quite the challenge. And this is not at all a railgun. A railgun is also an electromagnetic weapon, but it is entirely different. Instead, that involves two rails and a very high current through the projectile between the two rails. It's not a super efficient design due to super high friction forces between the rails. This does not have those flaws. You can kind of think of it as a railgun is comparable to a brushed DC motor. And a coil gun is more comparable to a brushless DC motor. And that analogy holds true in that these, of course, there's no contact points between any electrodes here, there's no rubbing, and they have the capacity to be of a higher efficiency. The primary difficulties with making a system like this work is one, is one, being able to detect everything and switch everything on and off quick enough. The turning on and turning off of these electromagnets needs to be pretty much instantaneous if you want any kind of uh, appreciable exit velocity. And then two, is being able to get a high enough wattage to go through these electromagnets. These electromagnets are what make up the barrel and the projectile is in the barrel for a very short amount of time. So because of that, you have very little time in order to give it that energy. And wattage is joules per second, so in order to give it the appropriate amount of energy, you need a very high wattage, meaning either very high current, very high voltage, or both. And you need to be able to dump all that power into it almost instantaneously. So if I can figure out those two, then I might be able to make something pretty cool here. But I expect this project to be pretty big, so I've divided up everything 
into a, a few main parts. So I'm currently in a project management web app that I developed. I talked about making this in the previous video. So I went ahead and started a new project, called it Coil Gun. And then I've got these five primary tasks here. I'm pretty sure that this constitutes everything that needs to go into it. Not totally sure, but of course this can all change in the future if need be. So right now I've got the capacitor charger, the high voltage switching module, barrel module, firing slash sugar mechanism, and the control circuitry. You can see that two of these things are modules, the rest of them aren't. The things that are denoted as modules will have to have multiple of them. So the barrel module will just be one individual solenoid. And then each barrel module will have to have one of the high voltage switching modules. So there will be multiple of those two. The rest of them there should only be one. You could have multiple maybe, but probably only just one of the rest. So the first thing here is the capacitor charger. So like I said earlier, you have to dump a ton of wattage into the electromagnets very quickly. And the standard way that you would do that is by charging up capacitors and then discharging them through the electromagnet. This will probably be the first thing that I tackle on here. So the capacitor charger will most likely be a uh, DC to DC boost converter. A boost converter just naturally charges up a capacitor to high voltage, so I think that should work appropriately. This is also going to need a uh, variable input and output voltage because ideally a coil gun would be handheld which means it needs to be battery powered and if you have like a lithium ion battery powering it you don't necessarily know exactly what the voltage is going to be so the input needs to be variable and of course the output needs to be variable accordingly the capacitors I have are also rated to 250 volts but I don't know if I should be going up to 250 I probably should not I ideally would want to stay maybe at 240 just to play it a little bit safe so having a variable output voltage on the DC to DC boost converter will just allow me to be a lot safer be a lot more controlled and hopefully not blow anything up at least nothing that shouldn't be blown up I also want this to have its own microcontroller I believe you can use a square way with varying duty cycles to control a DC to DC boost converter in order to finally control the potential output voltage. So I do think that this circuit will need its own microcontroller, or at least it'd be convenient if it did. That way I can have my primary microcontroller in the control circuitry here um, that would just send one signal, just an on or off signal, to the charger, and then that microcontroller there will do the rest of it. So in the high voltage switching module, of everything here, this is the simplest thing. These are just going to be a beefed up MOSFET module. This thing is what will be allowing the capacitors to discharge through the coils. So it needs to be able to handle the full voltage and full current that these capacitors can potentially dish out. So these are going to be based off of uh, five IRF3205 MOSFETs. Then they'll also require some transistor uh, logic drive circuitry. And that's all stuff I've done many a time, so nothing there is too, too unique, too complicated. What could be a little bit interesting though is it also needs an input and an output from the sensors that are going to be in the beginning and end of the uh, coil. The transistors need to be turned on and stay on when the first sensor is tripped. And then they need to be instantly discharged and continually discharged so they don't turn on again when the second one is tripped. So that could change things up a little bit but it shouldn't be too complicated or anything. Then the barrel module, this is the majority of it. This could be the most complex thing, and it definitely is the largest thing. That is as far as physical size and mass goes, and also how many components go into it. So the first thing is the air core solenoid. And then I think each of these individual barrel modules will just have their own little chunk of barrel. It won't be one continuous pipe or anything, just little bits. And I would like to test out different coil configurations to see what works best. Although this might end up being unrealistically difficult, I might have to totally remake everything every time for that. But I don't know if a coil with a lot of resistance but a lot of turns would be better than one with lower resistance and less turns. I'm not sure. So that could definitely use some testing, some real world testing. The barrel module is also going to include the capacitor bank. So what I'm thinking is that each individual module will have its own chunk of the capacitor bank and that the capacitors will probably just be stored along the barrel. So if you have 30 capacitors total and six different modules, each module would just have five capacitors to it specifically. And the barrel module also has to have the sensors on either side. What I'm thinking right now will be best for these sensors is uh, photoelectric switches, which I have some of. 
These photoelectric switches are kind of just U-shaped things. There's an infrared LED at one side and then a photodiode at the other side. So then when there's nothing in the middle of it in between that U, it gives a certain resistance. And then when you put something in, the resistance value will change. But ideally, this would not be done with a microcontroller. I don't want to have to read analog values from the resistance and then determine if it's changed or not and then use that value to then turn on the high voltage switching module and turn on the actual coil. Instead, what would be better if it was just all analog circuitry, not using any microcontroller at all, just the circuit itself detects, okay, this value is higher or lower than it was before, whatever, and then do something accordingly. Turn on a transistor, turn on a MOSFET, do something to send that signal forward. That way, it should be pretty instantaneous. There wouldn't be any delay in the microcontroller having to think about it, which could be fatal in a system like this. So then what also needs to be on here is the uh, sensor data manipulation, or I guess data interpretation. So that would just be a circuit to take the raw resistance value from the photoelectric switch and then convert it to just an on-off signal to be sent to the rest of the circuitry. I don't really know how I do that. I think I can figure it out though. Oh, I might be missing something on the barrel module. I think that's it though, so move on for now. So then the firing tr and trigger mechanism. This is somewhat simple. Not a lot of actual electronics on here, just physical stuff for the most part. So first you have the trigger mechanism. I would like this to trigger an electric switch, not directly triggering the firing mechanism. That way, just with some simple code, you can make it so that you can't fire unless the capacitors are actually charged or a safety is flipped or whatever. Just allows more control over it. Then there will need to be some sort of magazine, and I think it'll have to end up being spring-fed like a normal thing. And then I think for the actual firing, it'll probably end up being something like just a solenoid to push the projectile forward into the first stage of the barrel module. Not an air core solenoid, but an actual solenoid where it's pushing a piston forward. And there's also going to need to be something to hold the projectile in place when it's not being fired so that it can't just like slide down the barrel and automatically trigger a fire by accident. And that might also end up being like a just a little small solenoid to stick itself inside the barrel just to stop anything from going through until you actually want it to. And the last thing is a control circuitry. This could be pretty simple. This is primarily just going to be like an Arduino microcontroller to bring everything together. It'll really just have a few inputs and outputs to all the other modules or most of the other modules. That's really all the functionality to it. I might add a little bit of a visual thing just for enjoyment. I could add something just like a charging progress meter for the capacitors. So just have like a few LEDs in a line and then depending on how high the voltage in the capacitors is, you can just turn them on as they go up. So that way the user could see that they're all lit up and you're good to fire or they're halfway charged or whatever. Again, it's not necessary, might not do it, but it's something to put on there anyways. So I think that is everything. So if I can do all of these items inside all these tasks, then I will probably have a functional coil gun, maybe. Then all these things also have little dots by them so I can go ahead and check them off. So I can actually make progress on this list. I don't think I've left anything out. It's very possible that I did, but this looks like a pretty comprehensive list to me. So I hope you learned something, hope you got something out of this. I do think that this project has the capacity to be very cool in the end, assuming it works. Even if it doesn't work, there's certainly going to be a lot of trial, error, and learning along the way, but it has the potential to be spectacular. I'm very excited to see how this goes. Maybe you'll stick around to see how things turn out with me. There should be more to come on this very soon, but this is all I have for now, so bye.